When we add a wind force in Blender, by default it affects all the objects present in the scene. But we can change it easily. We will learn in this tutorial how to limit the effect of a wind force to a particular object. So let us start with our base file. Here, we have created three flags. If we simply run this, all the flags will drop due to gravity. We need to add a wind force so that the flags can fly in the air. So let us go to the first frame. Then in the add menu, under force, we'll add a wind force. We need to rotate it by 90 degrees so that we get a horizontal wind force. Then in the physics tab, we have to change the strength field to some high value, like 10,000. Now if we run it again from the beginning, we'll see that all the flags are equally affected by the wind. It does not currently matter how far they are from the wind object. Now let's say, we want only this German flag to be affected by the wind, and no effect should be there on the other flags. So go to the first frame. We need to first move this force field upward. It needs to be placed right at the middle point of the target object, which is the German flag in our case. Now we will create an area of influence around this wind force field. So expand this falloff section in the physics tab, and you'll get a minimum distance and a maximum distance. We don't need the minimum, but we'll enable this maximum distance. And since this length is 2 meter approximately, we need to also change this value to the same 2 meter. Now we'll see a circle, which indicates the area of influence. This is actually a sphere, so it will look like a circle, even if you look at it from another angle. Any object which is outside this sphere won't be affected by the wind force. And the radius of this sphere can be changed anytime by changing this distance field. Now if we run the simulation again, we'll see that only this flag is affected by the wind and the other flags are unaffected. And please remember that if you add any motion to your flag, you need to parent the force field to your flag so that the force field moves along with the flag. Next, if we go to the first frame of the animation, we can see that initially the flags are in a stretched form, which is unrealistic. So if you want them to start in a hanging status, that is also doable. Let us go to the last frame. Now, we have created these flags using this cloth physics, and the corresponding cloth modifier is here in the modifiers tab. We need to simply apply this modifier so that the current status of the flag becomes permanent. And then we need to do the same thing for the flag of Phyland as well. But these are cloth objects, so you may want to keep the cloth physics enabled for them. So while this is selected, press the shift key and select the second flag. For this one, the cloth physics is enabled as is. So from this drop down, select the option, copy to selected. Now the same cloth physics will be added to this. Don't worry if you see some unexpected deformations, it will get rectified when we run it again, or when we bake the physics. Let us also add back the cloth physics for Thailand. We'll apply the cloth modifier also for Germany, so that it starts in a flying state, and we need to bring back the cloth physics for this, copied from the other flag. Let's then run it again, and verify. So this time, the flag started in a more realistic state. And the most interesting part of this method is, in the physics settings, you can keyframe the max distance field and animate it. So you can dynamically include or exclude other objects during an animation. We can also duplicate this force field and place it near this third flag, so both of them will be now affected by only that wind which is attached to them. But there is another way to do this, so let us remove this second force field. And for this one, let's disable the max distance option. All the flags will be now affected by the wind equally. But for this flag, let's go to the physics tab, where we have the cloth physics. Scroll down to the section called field weights and expand it. Under this, we have all the fields affecting the object, and we have the wind factor here. Let us change this to zero. So this flag won't be affected by any wind. And for Germany, the wind factor is one. And also for Thailand, let's keep it as one. We can now run it for the final time. We will see that only these two flags are affected by the wind as expected, and this one is not affected at all. So this is how we can limit the influence of a wind force within a particular area, or keep it active only for a particular object. In fact, you can do the same with any type of force field. So I hope it helps you in some way. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.